Welcome back to Framing the Force. Before the break, we discussed the finale of The Acolyte Season 1 um, with so many narrative threads teased from Osha's turn to the dark side to Vernestra's relationship with Kamir to Darth Plagueis and Yoda having a little cameo in that uh, final episode. <laughs> There's a lot to pick up on uh, in a second season. Alex, do you think it's getting greenlit? And if it does get greenlit, where is season two going to take us? Uh, first off, yes, I absolutely think it's going to get greenlit for season two. I mentioned this, I think, very briefly earlier, where like I, I feel like it's pretty much all but confirmed that it'll get a season two. I think it's been pretty widely um, praised. Uh, fans have enjoyed it. If you ignore the review bombing, that's obnoxious, which I'm sure doesn't really impact it that much. Um, like, yeah, it's it's been I successful. Think they're aware. Yeah, like, I, like it's been like, yeah, I think that the Lucasfilm Disney is very. Uh, they see what happens online, right? And so they're not going to let something like that impact it too much. Um, right. So yeah, I definitely think it gets greenlit for a season two. Also, before I move into one of my bigger points, the Yoda thing at the end was so funny to me. It was like. It reminded me of that stinger at the end of the first or second episode of whatever, where it's just put at the end there for a second. And it's like, it was just so funny that they, to me, and like that they ended the season with like, oh, by the way, here's Yoda, that other guy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it was like, so random. Like, like, yeah, so Especially I, when she said we're not seeing Yoda in this show. <laughs> yeah. And which is fine. Like, I understand. I don't mind. I love stuff. Yoda. Yoda's one of my top five characters. I don't care. Just, but just, like, it was just such a, such a funny cameo to just not, I was not expecting to see my little green friend. Yeah. So like, that was funny, but um, yeah, the other threads that you mentioned, the big one or one of the big ones, I think that's interesting. I think was ha like, to me reads pretty close to confirmation of a popular theory about Kamir and uh, Fernestra. And that is, she obviously knows who he is. Like, she very clearly recognized him. She definitely him. whipped him. She yeah, like, 100%. Definitely yeah, so, from like, her. The, yeah, so the, the, the big theory is that it's her lightsaber whip that is what caused the scars on his on his back. And, like, yeah, absolutely. Like, I feel like it felt so, as much as you can confirm it through implication. Without saying, you, hey, like, I did that. <laughs> yeah, like, as you can get. Um, and so I'm really interested to learn more about their relationship and like their history and have that explored further and see where that goes from here because it also is one of those things where like whatever happened between them is enough to make her be like yeah like her immediate course of action with all of this is to pin it all on soul and like cover right it and also like, like when she gets on the planet she senses him she's like uh oh yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's a very it's a very big deal and so yeah so i really want to see what went down with those two yeah like i think that's going to be very very crucial i think that'll be a very big part of next season and mm -hmm. i'm definitely very interested in that and excited to see where that goes um besides that yeah i think that the kamir and osha stuff is going to be very interesting i i just I'm a fan of the dark side stuff too. Like, I think it's very compelling and I think it'll be cool to see how like just more of Kamir in general is going to be awesome. I, I loved his character mm -hmm. a lot. And so to see that relationship and how that evolves and what, like the way that he teaches her, I think is going to be very exciting to see. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to, but yeah, what are the big, what are your big things that you think are happening that we're going to get to see in season two? And what do you think looking forward to? I think we're going to get some like rule of two stuff. I mean, I'm we're going to get some it. like real hard can't like some like actual like in canon now. Like, like we're talking we're going to see the grand plan. We're not, not going to see the grand plan. We know what the grand plan is. We've seen order 66. We've seen it all, but we're going to see like maybe a mention of it, but like just kind of like the little behind the scenes details, the little small uh, putting that plan into place those little motions do you think start to sprinkle into the story i i, I hope at least do you think we get a bane mention <laughs> or reference um, to? i wouldn't be shocked just because like these mentioned a handful of times in the book yeah so i think uh i think plagueis plagueis is strange because he kind of wants to end the rule of two he's he takes the rule of two to kind of like a new era i can't really say he wants to end it per se mm -hmm. but he kind of like 
like once once he kills off Tenebris, he's like, I'm going to go do my thing now. So he's very he's a very interesting Sith Lord. He has his own agenda, but he's also got the Sith agenda. He's he's very compelling in the sense that like he is through and through a Sith. He is so damn selfish. Yeah. That nothing else matters. So I I really hope he I know he's not going to be that per se that he could be the main antagonist like that lurking in the shadows kind of antagonist kind of situation. I think Kimir, I mean, if they're not set up to be the protagonist in the sense of like it's their story and it's mm-hmm. more of a Jedi thing, then I think like I think Kamir's going to get that uh that bad guy role. But I don't know. I think I th- I'm I'm here for Plagueis. That's what's what I that's what I was when they announced it in like December 2020. I was like, it's, oh, I hope this is a Plagueis show. It's so, wild to me that it's been that long, honestly, to think about yeah, it. Yeah, that, the, like, the they announced that slate, and I was like, everyone was like, oh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, we're going to get more Ewan. Oh, there's an Ahsoka show. I'm like, nah, nah, I see a Sith show right there. <laughs> yeah, you're like, there it is. So there that was the one I had circled. So I, then hopefully season two, like, we're just getting started, because I, I do agree, like, season one was more of a mid-season finale if anything i think the story is just starting so i'm really excited to see like more red lightsabers yeah same i think that that's yeah that's the most exciting part about it and i would love i would love a bane reference a bane mention or like Mm -hmm. some real like that like yeah them spending a lot of time with the rule of two I think that's one of my favorite concepts in Star Wars. Bane is one of my favorite characters in Star Wars. Um, Bane's a G, top five so, Sith for me. Easily. I, I love I love Bane so much, and so to see more of that, and I also have to imagine that like Disney is interested in eventually doing something with Bane. Like we're mm-hmm. we're seeing them explore more stuff outside the Skywalker timeline. Everyone. They're starting to get the hang of a, a big, big lightsaber fight, so we can start to, once they get a little bit more under their belt, we can get some big lightsaber fights. Yeah, I, and I think that one, the Old Republic is something people have been clamoring for for forever, right? <sighs> Give it to me. And so, yeah, like every everyone wants it, and so, and then within that, Bane is one of the biggest things from there, right? And mm-hmm. so, I think that yeah, it would be it would be cool to see some to get some stuff about Bane in season two. Um, but yeah, the Plague of stuff is definitely going to be fascinating to see that unfold. It, it's just cool to see how, how they're going to approach it because the whole cast is dead. I mean, you yeah. got, you yeah, got like ocean may you have Kamir, you got Vernestra. That's basically it, but it's a, it's a clean slate now. Like yeah. you got plenty of uh screen time to go to other characters or to develop these ones we kind of have like really hone in on them. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I mean, you'll lose a nice chunk of chunk of time with soul gone. Like Mm -hmm. give it to Plagueis, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So you have Plagueis step in and there's also (laughs) um, the Senator that Vernestra speaks with at the no oh, he's he's he, he he knows that man knows Bro is, he is he's like this is all sus i do not like this right i i uh, he was he was fed facts <laughs> absolutely just nailing it to a t that guy's definitely watched star wars and is definitely a fan of the sith that guy knows what's up <laughs> <laughs> yeah he uh he very much is not on the jedi side and is like you guys are not doing well and i see right through all of this mm-hmm. um so it'll be it's, in- it's 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 really strange because i'm i know star wars is it's a very political franchise but yeah. like senate stuff and whatnot i've never been interested in it i'm I'm here for i'm here for lightsabers in the force that's pretty much yeah. what i'm showing up for but this guy is probably the first senator that has like aside from like palpatine mm-hmm. like caught my eye so I'm i'm really excited to see what his little uh the whole the whole mess he's going to try and make. Yeah. I think that the political stuff specifically with like the, like literally the gov- like government political stuff, Senate, in yeah. Star Wars, like all of that, I the think Republic. is really, yeah. Like I am, am very interested in all of that and all the like machinations of it. And I think it's really fascinating, but it's also very easy to make kind of boring or off putting. And so mm-hmm. I think that there's like a fine line there. I think that when it's good, it's phenomenal. Like it's really, right 
really interesting stuff. And yeah, like it just takes that that right angle on it or those those right characters to really connect and land. Like my favorite, my favorite politics stuff in Star Wars is not anything that we've seen in any of the shows or like live action or animation, but the Chiss stuff, like the mm, way that those politics mm-hmm. operate, like game it's literally just game of, yep. it's game of thrones in space right and it's so yeah cool. um so well, like that i kind absolutely of, love the chess yeah so that kind of stuff is like i okay, think i lied sense. so aside from palpatine <laughs> and <the> chess <laughs> completely um, forgot about those guys so like that that's always cool but that's a whole other i could talk about them for a long time we'll get to we'll get to Ooh, that i'm sure yeah. in future episodes but um yeah i think season two is definitely like there's there's a lot of ground that they've uh got ahead of them there's so many things that they've set up and i i think that they did as much as we've been saying that this felt like a mid-season finale in a lot of ways they did also do i think a really good job of cleaning up like a season's worth of threads and like tying right. like this is a really clean break line and then now we'll stop they have a nice little fresh start to to, to explore season. the next road yeah so i think that they did a good job of wrapping things up like that and then after wrapping it up, putting a little Yoda stinger at the end, because <laughs> we got to have a little green guys show up. In the I just want to see. I want. Yeah, I know they're going to whip out the the last Jedi puppet. But man, oh, man, would it be hilarious if they busted out the 99 Phantom Menace puppet? Oh, yeah, well, that would be <laughs> that great. would be something. Yeah, that was definitely the last Jedi puppet. Yeah, 100 like, percent. Like, sure. But it looked I love I love the last Jedi puppet. I think it looks excellent. Yeah. So I'm I'm all for it. I, I just keep Yoda as a puppet. I don't know happy. <laughs> <laughs>